The last topic in King's chapter on functions is program termination. We've learned how to use a return function. We're going to learn how to use a new function called exit. Whenever we have, uh, whenever main ends, we have that return zero at the end. And we've been using code blocks in our examples. And notice that when code blocks ends, it says something like process return zero. So whatever we have is the return value shows up here, right? What we're going to do is we're going to use a new function called exit, which will actually make your program terminate. And we can call exit from any function at all. So far, we've only been able to have our program terminate from main. And we've only usually had a main function in our program up to this point. Right. So we call the exit function. It's defined in the standard library, so you'll have to include that header file. Right? Its prototype is void exit, and then you can actually pass exit some sort of status to return. Right. Two example uses here, you can call exit with this exit success. This is a macro that's defined for normal termination. It'll return the value of zero. Exit, exit failure, I believe will return the value of one is the value of exit failure. And this has all been defined in the standard library. Right. So return versus exit. Return causes a function to return to the calling function. Right. Only a return statement in main causes a program to end. That's simply because the operating system called main and it returns that zero back to that operating system process. But otherwise, using return in our other function just made us go back to whatever function we had called from. The exit statement is going to cause the program to end no matter which function we happen to be in. Right? And so what we're going to, going to pop up this example that I've given you with your lecture notes. All right, so I just copied it in here, right? I've got the standard library for the exit function. I've got two function prototypes here. Uh, one's named get user input, the other one is for main. Now we normally don't put a function prototype for main, but you can put one in. If you do, it looks just like this, followed by the semicolon, right? Here, now I've defined the behavior of get user input. Right, let's see when we call get user input. So whenever I want to see how a program works, I know that a program always starts at main. If I come down and I take a look at main, and we de I've declared this variable that's of type int, its name is main value. And the next thing that happens here is we're going to call our function called get user input. So we know then that our program flow will come up here to this function, first line. And let's just go ahead and take a look at running the debugger here. No, let's just build this. All right, so run the cursor, right? It, it went through this first example here in May, or this first line here in May. Function call brought us into here. We can see now there's no parameters in this list, so we can see this function has no arguments. This is empty, but we have a local variable named value and a local variable called numred. Right? If I say next line, we know that printf will just print out this message on the screen which it did, it's prompting us, please enter an integer, right? So now I need to say next line so that scanf will execute and wait for me to type in some sort of integer value, right? Scanf then, when it returns, is going to return the number of items it successfully reads and store that num red. So let me just hit next line, right? That disappears, now it's waiting for me to type something in. All right, uh, so five is an integer, I'll hit the enter key. All right, so notice now numred got a value of one. Simply because scanf returned one, it successfully read in the one integer argument it was asked to read in. All right, so now we're just going to print out, if I say next line, right, it prints out the value stored, return value. We see that here. And now what it's going to do is make a decision, right? If numred equals one, it's going to return back the value that it got. So we know that's true. Right, so it's going to return the value of five, right? It comes back in here to main, and then we assign the return value of this statement here. So main value now has the value of five, right? If we were to just hit next line, we'd see this prints out the value of five. All right, so let me stop the debugger. So the way this get user input works is whenever scanf succeeds in reading an integer value, then it actually returns that value. But when it fails, right, when num red is not equal to one, it's going to print out this error message of invalid user input, 
and then call the exit function. And we'll see our program then just terminates. So, sorry. Yeah. Let me pop up the right thing here, hit the wrong key. All right, so once again, let's just do a run to cursor. All right. So next line. All right, so now scanf is waiting. All right, so I'll just type in, oh, how about a capital Q? All right, that's not an integer, so scanf should fail. All right, scanf couldn't read that it is an integer. Notice, right, value just has whatever garbage is still in it. Numred has a zero. All right, we'll just print out that value. And now numred, this will be false. It's not equal to one. So we're going to execute then this printed out, right? So we printed out the scanf return value, just printed out the message error invalid user input. And now this exit failure will cause our program to terminate, right? So if I say call that, our program actually stopped running. And if we just go ahead and let's just do a run so that we're not using the debugger, right? Let's capital Q, right? Error invalid user input, process return one. Well, the operating system, the process got this value here. Exit failure is actually a value of one, right? We use those mnemonics usually to indicate success or failure. We could just as easily return some other value. So if I typed in negative three here, let's build and run. All right, and there's our capital Q again, which we know fails. Well, now we can see that the program actually returned a minus three. So Exit just completely leaves the program. It didn't go back here to main where the function was called. Our program just ended, right? So the exit function, right, if we don't have a way to cover from, recover for some errors, like if we're detecting something, maybe like division by zero, other things like that, the exit function is a way to just make your program quit. If there's no way to recover from whatever error that we've detected, and our program has to detect that error. All right, so that was the last section then from this chapter.